Um, with regards to strengthening existing partnerships, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. There are so many programs out there that do so many different things, and not every program is not one single program is going to be right for everyone, and not everyone is going to be right for one single program. And so that's why there's always these options of so many opportunities and programs and partnerships out there for, in communities that meet certain needs for certain individuals. With that being said, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. See what you can do with current partnerships, maybe that aren't reaching the capacity that they need to reach in the community, and see if you can pull them in. Utilize their knowledge, utilize their resources, offer ours in return, um, and be able to strengthen it and build something that could become a collaborative and offer something new and inventive and see you know what can be brought um, with those things. Um, the other important thing is, is to make sure that you bring in people um, and utilize partnerships with individuals that meet basic needs of people. Many times individuals who use substances, even um, young adults and teenagers, use those substances due to secondary issues outside of peer pressure. Are, is there trouble at home? Um, are there, is there a lack of resources with regards to food or finances? Is the home environment not safe? Is the home environment um, temporary? Um, you know, do the parents provide a safe area, but they're constantly moving around? Do they not have a permanent foothold in the community? Find out what those resources are for those things. Are these kids, you know, coming into contact with individuals who can supply them with these substances because they don't want to go home, because they don't have a home, because their homes are lacking in what they need with those services. So making sure that you pull in the services that offer basic necessities of everyone, not just individuals who are struggling or in individuals who are um, at a level of discontent, um, you know, make sure that you can bring those partnerships in there as well and see if that can help to better those things. With regards to organizational researches or resources, um, com uh, continuing education, 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 education. Drug culture in our society is ever changing, and unfortunately, so many programs develop after it's been such an extended period of time after something new has occurred within our community that by the time that that prevention program even starts day one, it is already outdated. So making sure that you are constantly updating and constantly researching and constantly educating those individuals that are involved in this program so that they can offer the proper services and knowledge, not only to stakeholders, not only to the legislators, not only to the people who are in charge, but also to the people that they are trying to serve within that prevention program. Making sure that the prevention workforce in and of itself is, is set and, and uh, developed and prepared Personally, I think primary care has to come into play. And unfortunately, it's a tight subject just because doctors don't like to give out information and, you know, don't like other people um, to be more knowledgeable on what they're knowledgeable about. But unfortunately, you have to have individuals like this, especially when you're dealing with children on board so that they know what's going on. They see these people quickly and they don't see these people long term, whereas individuals within a prevention program might be more long lasting with that regard. Um, so it's really important to make sure that primary care is involved um, because educating them as well as them educating the individuals in the prevention program can only better um, enhance those resources. Thank you.